Oh boy. I think I have a new favorite microphone for streams and for desktop video creation and the like. This thing is so good. Oh boy. And it's so small. Like, what? As someone who reviews products regularly, the format tends to stay the same until specific changes are made. But every so often, you get a really special unit in for review that stands out so much or really makes you that excited. And the normal format just doesn't feel good enough anymore. The constraints of how you usually present the product just doesn't feel right. But you still have to review it. This space age looking microphone that you've probably seen in some of my videos recently and I've gotten a lot of comments asking about is the Earthworks Icon Pro. It is a small diaphragm condenser microphone, but it's a broadcast oriented, streaming oriented condenser microphone. Kind of like the Rode Broadcaster we reviewed recently, but this one just blows like most microphones out of the water. A problem is that sometimes it just doesn't set in just how much you love the product until after the review cycle is complete and you're using it more naturally in production. What mic are you using today? We are using the wonderful, the incredible, I just made it click. I apologize. The inc I'm not gonna move it anymore. The incredible Earthworks Icon. It is a very expensive microphone. It is a broadcast condenser mic, but I think it's my new favorite microphone and I kinda want a second one so I can have one to match on both of my desk setups. So I maybe can talk with them about that. Sometimes viewers fall in love with it before you can even talk about it. I'm Ebos Fox, the stream professor, and I've reviewed countless microphones, capture cards, webcams, etc. here on the channel over the years to help you get the best possible gear for your stream to not waste any money and things like that. So hit the subscribe and notification buttons so you can stay informed. Today we're looking at a baller microphone that comes with a baller price. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in here even though it's gonna hurt retention, but this is a $500 microphone. This is your forever gear. And I wanna make more videos talking about this concept, so I'm saying it here now, so if you see anyone else talking about it, I said it first. Once you start buying gear, getting a workflow, really making a job for yourself in the content creation space, there gets to be gear that you buy that you effectively use forever. And if you break it or you need to replace it for some reason, you tend to just replace it with another iteration of, your, of, of itself instead of buying anything else. Gear is meant to last a very long time, not be upgraded every couple years as if it's a toy. This is one such gear. I call that kind of gear forever gear. It's gear that you keep with you pretty much forever. And I have a lot of those throughout my studio. One of my main key lights now is the Aperture Nova P300C. It is a $1,500 light, but I may ne never need another light of its caliber again in my entire career, unless it just dies. And if it does, maybe that's what I replace it with. This is one of those such microphones where you have to pay a pretty penny for it. I don't recommend anyone who's buying their first microphone for streaming to ever go with something this expensive. Go with a cheaper microphone when you start out, always. But if you are looking to upgrade and you don't like getting into the nitty gritty of picking out gear or worrying about what you should buy or the like, this is the kind of microphone that if you decide it's the right one for you, you buy it and then you never worry about buying a microphone ever again, which is Pretty awesome. Specs wise, we're looking at a frequency response of 20 hertz to 30 kilohertz, which is a little bit higher. This is a cardioid pickup pattern. Again, this is a condenser microphone, so it does take phantom power, but it does not require a lot of gain. So you don't need a, a beefy preamp for it. Currently, I'm sitting around 30 dB of gain. That's it, which is pretty low for microphones. Uh, and yeah, it weighs about 1.5 pounds, so it's small. It's kind of light as it is. And the, the, the super clutch thing physically, other than, you know, the shiny, gaudy, if you don't like it, or space age sci-fi looking look to it that it has, is it ships with their own mount that they ship with all of their microphones, or at least all the microphones like this. It's basically a fancy ball head, but for your microphone. So we're gonna have some microphone handling noise, but if I want to adjust the angle, I don't have to fight my microphone arm. Like if, sometimes you need a different angle than your microphone arm gives you and you have to fight it a little bit, or sometimes in some cases you may have even broken your microphone arm trying to get the right angle. I've done that with super cheap ones, never the expensive ones. But with this one, you just twist the knob and you've got full control here and even with like some weird angles to get like a side upward angle at me, I can do that right now. If I tighten it. Now I have it pointed up at me instead of, you know, even with my mouth. I can do all sorts of these weird little angles with this very fancy ball head that you typically only see 
for cameras. Again, as mentioned, this is a condenser microphone. If you're not sure the difference between a condenser and a dynamic microphone, a condenser microphone is powered by that 48 volt phantom power that I mentioned, which means it's receiving power and that activates the mic capsule to make it sensitive to sound. This makes it more sensitive to sound than the dynamic counterparts, which gives you a more natural soundscape typically. You know, your voice is gonna be reflected more naturally and things like that, but it's gonna pick up more ambient sound. However, this one is designed to be a broadcast streaming microphone, so they've got the, the grills around the side to help re reject some of that sound from around it and things like that compared to, say, the Elgato Wave or an AT2020, those kinds of microphones, the CAD E100S, those kinds of condenser microphones are designed more for treated studio spaces and they're not gonna reject a whole lot of background noise. Now, a dynamic mic by comparison, such as my previous favorite mic for the desk, the Electro Voice RE20, it's actually activated. It does not receive phantom power. It's activated by the sound, hit, sound waves hitting the microphone capsule itself. This means that it requires a lot more gain and thus is less sensitive to sound, but it rejects a lot more background noise and it's typically used for broadcast scenarios where you have an audience, uh, untreated spaces, whatever. This is kind of a compromise between the two formats because it's still a condenser. It still sounds really freaking nice, but it doesn't require, you know, the same kind of sound treatment. One thing that sets it apart from other broadcast-oriented condenser microphones that we've looked at, like the Rode Broadcaster, is it doesn't need to be close to you. In fact, they actually, I read, whenever I was emailing Earthworks about this microphone, because some of you had requested I take a look at it, and it looked really exciting, <laughs> they specifically wanted me to note, or wanted to note to me, rather, that you don't have to be right up on it like you do some of these other microphones that need that proximity effect to make you sound like a radio DJ. This microphone's not designed to make you sound like a radio jock or anything like that. But that also means that you don't have to be right up on it. So you get that 45 degree angle to not plosive off the microphone and to look better on camera. And that's how it's designed to work. And you still sound great. And that is stellar. That is huge for me specifically, trying to figure out all the right angles to get a microphone and then I'm making tutorials with the microphone in my face. I've made multiple videos now about trying to work around that. This one sits here, it's on camera. Theoretically, if I mounted my mic arm over here, I could like mount it right here off camera and then you'd never see it. I could do that if I wanted to, but like it's still on camera where I have it mounted now, but I don't have to block my face with it and I don't even have to point my mouth directly at it and I don't have to be close to it. I am about six to eight inches away from it right now and it still sounds stellar. And because it's a condenser microphone and doesn't require as much gain, it still picks me up cleanly. This is just wild. The important thing about this angle note is that the pickup cone and the natural sound you can get out of it is quite a bit more flexible than most dynamic broadcast mics as those tend to start to sound weak or way more roomy once you angle too far away from the mic. Physics still apply, but you can really keep a solid sound at a variety of angles with the Icon Pro. So we got more neon signs, or, you know, fake neon signs distributed throughout the studio. We got the Stream Professor one. Mm, yes, I, I, I'm finally achieving my video rental store slash arcade aesthetic that I've been after for a while. You've been hearing it raw, of course, for now. Uh, I am still experimenting with post-processing for it. You've heard various experiments of that in the different videos that I have done. Let's roll to some comparisons to the other microphones that I have tested and reviewed over the years that I would traditionally use at this desk, and we're gonna throw in a surprise comparison as well. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Three rings for the Elven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their Halls of Stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die, one for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. We're gonna do a talking while typing test, talking while typing, unbox royale switches, talking while clicking, tippity tip tip tap tip tap tap tap. Talking while typing test, talking while typing, unbox royale switches, talking while typing and clicking, talking while typing and clicking, talking while typing. 
Talking while typing, talking while typing, unbox Royale switches, talking while clipping, clicking and typing, talking while clicking, tippity tap, tip tap tap. We're doing our talking while typing test, talking while typing, unbox Royale switches, talking while typing, clicking, clacking, clicking, talking while typing, talking while typing, unbox Royale switches. Clicking, clicking, talking while clicking, clickety clack, click, 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 click. White noise in front of the microphone, coming around the side, back behind, low. We have our white noise test in front of the microphone, going around the microphone, in front. And our white noise test in front of the microphone. In front of the microphone, around the side, side, above, below, and behind. Yeah. In front of the microphone, coming around the side of the microphone, back behind the microphone. So the surprise microphone that I threw in here was my my all-time favorite microphone for any use case, although it's not exactly perfect for the desk, which is the MKH416 shotgun microphone from Sennheiser. This is a, a legendary microphone that's used for voiceover and vocal booths. It's used for movie sets, all sorts of stuff, and it makes me sound phenomenal just right out of the box, and it has been my favorite mic for a very long time. However, at the desk, since it is a shotgun microphone, and this particular shotgun microphone is very sensitive to reverb and gets kind of warbly, it's not a great microphone because it's not going to reject background noise the same. IMO out of the box, the Icon Pro sounds fairly similar to the MKH416 in terms of re replicating my sound, but re it's a little bit more boomy, especially if I get right up on it, but it rejects more background sound while still keeping me sounding the way that I like. Maybe if I tweak the boominess a little bit. So that is stellar and a big reason why this is potentially my new favorite desk microphone. Something I wanted to be careful to note here is that the Electrovoice RE20, my previous forever mic and usually my favorite, is still great. It, it really is. Every time we review one of the cheaper dynamic mics, I'm always just reminded of how rock solid the RE20 is. The Icon Pro does not take anything away from that. And perhaps those who need more sound rejection and isolation, or specifically want the radio voice sound, you'll still be better off with an RE20. The Icon Pro is a small bit of a compromise on the noise rejection side, and trades that for quite a bit more natural, pleasing sound, at least to my ears, which is something that many people inquiring about mics that I've reviewed are after. In terms of post-processing, you've been hearing some of it here, and these voiceover segments have been recorded with the GoXLR, with my usual noise gate and compressor settings, with just a minus one or minus two to the mids in EQ. Nothing fancy. It soars when you add these basic touches. It's not uncommon that I finish a review feeling a tad unsatisfied with the whole thing, but that's usually because I want the product to do more. In this case, I looked back upon the original review I shot, unhappy with how well I could portray just how great the Icon Pro sounds and works for me. It reminds me of my first time using the RE20 or my MKH416. It's such an exhilarating feeling. I kind of want all of my streaming setups to have these now. Samples and everything have been played. Uh, time codes will be in the description. The Nebula Cup will probably have a couple extra, extra uh, samples for you to compare to. But yeah, like I said, this is a very expensive microphone. You are paying a high price, but it's for a microphone that theoretically you never really have to replace. And it comes with a cool ball head as well. I'm super stoked on it. You'll probably see it in most of my videos here at the desk when I'm not reviewing other microphones. The RE20 is still great. It saws its place. It's probably moving over to the retro setup especially in this lovely new black form factor, but 
I think the Icon Pro is here to stay. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more tech education. The playlist link will be down below for all of my other microphones that I have reviewed, as well as a video about six OBS scripts that take your stream to the next level. Go check that out, and remember, be kind, rewind.